The Lord be with you. This is Father Mark Kendall of the parishes of Grand Turk and Salt Key, bringing to you morning devotions from the Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands for Tuesday the 5th of April. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Since the invasion of Ukraine by Russia on the 24th of February, prayers are constantly being offered up for the people of Ukraine. In our own churches, in services that we look at on television or via the internet, and even from the mouths of world leaders, celebrities, and other prominent persons. However, there is a dearth of prayers for the people of Russia, and in particular, President Putin. These circumstances beg the question, whether the invaders and their leaders are not worthy of our prayers. During the season of Lent, we focus a lot on temptation, on sin, repentance, forgiveness, love, mercy, and grace. We think about sins of commission and sins of omission. The familiar words, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, deed, and what we have left undone have greater meaning at this time. Notwithstanding all this, today I put to you that we are inclined to commit the sin of omission when we neglect to commend to God those who are not our kith and kin, those with whom we are not friendly, those with whom we are not in solidarity. For them to be the beneficiaries of God's grace, mercy, and transformative power, in the Gospel for today's Mass, taken from John chapter 8, there is an interesting exchange between Jesus on the one hand and the scribes and Pharisees on the other. The scribes and Pharisees are Jesus' antagonists. Like wasps flying around, they were waiting for an opportunity to sting. The scribes and Pharisees were questioning, scrutinizing, inciting, trying to trap Jesus in statements and actions that were contrary to the law, trying to elicit something to criticize him for and to accuse him of. They were determined to castigate him. But Jesus is aware of their shenanigans. Although he exercises patience, he teaches and exhorts, it is to no avail. In verse 25, he seems exasperated as he says, Why do I speak to you at all? I have much to say about you and much to condemn, but the one who sent me is true. He goes on to say in verse 28, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own but I speak these things as the Father instructed me. And the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what is pleasing to him. Under these circumstances, it could have been easy for Jesus to walk away, to ignore his antagonists, or to be dismissive of them. Remember the attitude of Jonah, who initially refused to go to Nineveh because he felt that the people there were too wicked and not deserving of God's favor? However, in today's gospel, Jesus asserts, for I always do what is pleasing to him. 
You will recall that Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount had instructed according to Luke chapter 6, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. In Matthew's version, according to Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. The reality is that God's grace, mercy, and transformative power are not limited to the people with whom we are in favor. More than that, we commit the sin of omission when we neglect to pray for them. In the gospel, Jesus said, I always do what is pleasing in his sight. We should not allow our prayers to be characterized by prejudice, partisan politics, and an inordinate bias and discrimination. When we pray for the government, we have an obligation to pray for an effective opposition. When we lift up our friend, we can also ask for God, if it is his will, to turn the hearts of our enemies. When we pray for Ukraine, we have to pray for Putin too. The Father's reign falls on the just and the unjust. Remember Jesus' prayer from the cross, Father, forgive them. Listen to the words of this English folk song. It's a prayer for enemies. God bless our enemies, send them your word. Where truth of the gospel has rarely been heard. Give them revelation of Jesus the Christ, that they might believe and inherit new life. God bless our enemies, though they have done wrong, Forgive their transgressions and give them your song. Teach us to be merciful as you have been, forgiving as you have forgiven our sin. God bless our enemies, free them from lies. Give ears that will hear you and open their eyes. Then bring them the joy that comes only from you and peace for their souls when they learn what is true. God, bless our enemies. Take hearts of stone and turn them to flesh and then make them your own. Give love for their neighbors and love for their Lord and grant them the wisdom to put down the sword. Amen. Remember to pray for your enemies today. Pray for the enemies of peace, truth, and justice in our countries and in the world, that God may turn their hearts to him. And let us not sin by omission in our prayers. I pray that this devotion is meaningful to you, and I ask you to share it with others. May God's grace, mercy, and guidance be poured out abundantly on you today.